Hey everyone, Rick from Rick's RC and more. I've got the uh, SCX uh, six in front of me here. I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just, I want to take the diff covers off, and I just want to check the uh, if I got to do any shimming. Um, I know some of the earlier models guys were saying that uh, you had to shim the shim the diffs. Um, I'm going to check a few things out on it. Uh, the steering servo seems to have a little play there. I'm not sure. Maybe I stripped out a gear or could be just a situation where it was always like that. I just never noticed. But uh, that's what we're going to get into today. I had it out on the trail. I took two, uh, two 5,000 uh, milliamp three cells with me. And... Uh, I got, I don't know, maybe two and a half to three hours runtime, maybe closer to two and a half hours runtime with the uh, with those two five thousands. The uh, yeah, you got to take the the center caps off this guy, and it's ten millimeter to uh, to pull the wheels off. Um, the the Falcon uh, Wild Peaks that come on these are really good traction on, on rock. As far as uh, loose stuff, uh, the traction with them isn't very good. They uh, they tend to spin, and once they start spinning, you just you lose all traction. Um, so I don't, down the road, I can definitely see a, a set of Hyraxes for this guy. And uh, probably some new rims because these are glued. I believe these are glued. Oh no, they are. Uh, they are beadlock. They're not glued, so I could keep the the stock wheels. Sometimes it's good to have an extra set of, of rubber, though, that you don't have to go through a lot to have to to change out. But uh, we'll see. <clears throat> I've got. Uh, it doesn't take long for me to get this body scratched up. I uh, I don't know. I get a new crawler once I take it out. I just kind of go go hard on it. Don't worry about it scraping down the sides of rocks. Maybe I uh, I need to be a little bit more careful. <laughs> uh, we got some scrapes in the aluminum there and the stickers. Uh, as, as far as uh, a review on the vehicle they're they're not as capable as you might think like i said uh, maybe it was where i was crawling on um on rocks like i said that it, it works really good but if you get into any type of loose dirt gravel um there's a uh, spots that uh i was crawling there's like a lot of roots um detractions not near as good I am used to uh, 110 scale. I'm also used to having uh, high traction tires like Hyrix's on the uh, on the SCX uh, 10.3. I haven't done any adjustments on the suspension. I ran it just as it comes right out of the box. I should, uh, I had to go outside and get the socket and everything for this guy. I should buy a, a spare 10 millimeter and keep it in the, uh, the house here handy. So when I go to work on this guy, these tires too, um, the foams in them, they're, they're good for, for straight crawling but side hilling or turning yep they they will just roll right over on you so there's uh definitely some room for improvement there uh uh anyhow i'll probably uh edit this video down i'm not going to show me ripping everything apart because it's uh it is time uh time consuming i don't want this to be a a really long video I'm gonna have to uh, definitely carry some extra batteries with me uh, 
I uh, I went through those two five thousands, and uh, we were just kind of right near the truck, and the the second one the second one lipoed out. So uh, it's uh, I've got some little mini ones. Maybe take those with me as well, because you don't want to have to carry this uh, carry this out. Uh, you can see I've I've got some good scratches on her down the sides and and whatnot. But uh, quality of the truck seems to be good. Um, nothing come loose, nothing broke. Um, like I said, that uh, the the steering servo on it 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 is a powerful servo. The the issue. Uh, more is it takes a lot of power out of your ESC. You'll hear your ESC fan wind down, uh, which means it's really labor in it. So we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. There might be might be a uh, BEC put in in the future, or maybe a new steering servo. But uh, out of the box, it's I would say it's all right. So I'm going to uh, start taking uh, links off, suspension links off, because I think I got to do that to get the, uh, the diff cover off of this guy and probably need to take these hexes off and all. So we'll carry on. So <clears throat> good news here. You actually can get with an Allen key um, all these out without... Uh, without having to take any links or anything off. So I can just check and see if any shimming needs to be done and then, you know, pull the the axles out of it after that uh, after that fact, instead of taking everything apart and finding out it doesn't really need to be shimmed. Oh, that, uh, that seems very tight. <clears throat> There's no play there in the front, at least. That's good to see. I... If you could move that ring gear side to side, then uh, you would have to take it apart and put a shim in to move it a little closer. But uh, no, it seems to be right where it needs to be. So uh, hopefully we can get the back cover off without uh, having to remove any links or anything like that as well. And uh, make sure that the uh, the rear diff is good. And then uh, the, also the uh, a lot of guys say that the slipper clutch is a little loose on these guys out of the box. Um, on the trails, I didn't notice it slipping at all. But uh, we'll see if I have time and uh, today and pop that off and see where we're at with that as well. The, this is what I'm, I'm using for now key. Just kind of a T-handle. And uh, you can get in there and, and take these Allen head screws out, put them back in. You can reach all four. We'll see if it works in the back. If you had just a regular L handle, um, I'm sure you would be able to get it to work as well. I use these T handles because they got a little, these are just cheapies, but they got a little sleeve here where you can spin it so you can hold this and spin stuff in and out quickly. Comes in handy. And that one feels like it's already stripped out. That's not good. These weren't very tight coming out. That one snugged up. I'm going to assume that it is not going to be hard for me to get water in there if I go into some deep water with this. I, uh, I'm not the type of guy, I don't generally go submerging my rigs. I usually go pretty easy on them when it comes to water because I really don't want to have to spend the time taking everything apart. 
Um, and, you know, regardless of saying it's waterproof, nothing is ever 100% waterproof. Uh, I always find. I try not to go up into where the diffs are. I try to keep it, if I'm in the water, just, uh, just above the bottom rim line of your tires. See if this one tightens up. Yeah. So when you're putting these in, be very careful not to over tighten them because they seem to strip very easy. To, and uh, to fix that, you're pretty much buying a new diff cover because that's what these thread into. Um, Loctite, I find with plastics, does not work. They're, it's kind of pointless. It doesn't seem to really do anything. Um, you could try a, uh, a silicone to kind of just hold it tight. Once you get it threaded in there and the silicone dries, I find that uh, to work better than uh, Loctite if you do strip out of plastic. Well, on to the rear diff. All right, so you can get the rear diff opened up too without removing any links or anything. Uh, it's good and uh, it's good and snug as well. There's there's no play there. There's good gear mesh. Seems to be a, a decent amount of grease. Let me try to get the camera actually in there. So. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll put the back cover back on it. It doesn't take long to to get the diff covers and diffs and the underside of the sky all scratched up. It's a rock crawler. I'm gonna carry on here. All right, so now I gotta put it all back together. As far as the uh, diffs goes, right. Right out of the box, everything looked good. No need to go too overboard tightening that, I wouldn't imagine. I really like these center hubs. It's a, it's a lot of Allen heads to take off to, to access that, but uh, I would say your, uh, your odds of ever losing one would be slim to none with all of these with all six uh, Allen heads on here. Not to mention it's it's a little bit more of a scale look because it's it's like you would have your, your six lug nuts lug nuts on an axle of a real vehicle. You could probably get some actual um, little bolts to make it more realistic, but uh, getting in there with something and having them that small and I would think would be its own challenge. We're going to put the wheels back on it and the uh, body on this will hinge all the way over the uh, I thought maybe it was the spare tire that catches but it's actually the on the back there it's got the uh, the D-rings uh, tow hooks and the back part of the the cage just catches them and I mean it's good flexible plastic so you can just kind of flex it past that point and uh, have the body completely open over 180 degrees to work on it you just got to watch the the wiring you got to make sure you unplug the rear set of lights um, I opened it up once and then actually you kind of shot back on me and I forgot about that and it it, the wire did pull out it didn't do any damage to any of the wires but uh, definitely something you need to you need to be cautious of getting the body open and closed on it it's not that bad um, typical the same as your uh, your SCX 10 3 um, the body post down there getting the pins in and out can be a bit of a pain but at least there's there's only two whereas the uh, the 10.3 you're looking at uh, you're looking at four. I'll uh, I'll put the other tire on off camera and go from there.
So I'll show everybody here. I took the body pins out. I'll show you. Um, yeah, as you lift the body and hold on, I have to disconnect the wires that I told everybody not to pull on. All right. So right in, whoop, right in here, there's your pivot point. And you can see you've got the uh, tow hook that are flipped right up, probably from last time flipping the body. But uh, yeah, these tow hooks, just the hardware, that's what it, it binds on. You get it so far and then it lets go. So yeah, it just, it catches on the hardware for these. If, uh, if they had to just move these tow hooks in a little bit more, that would have, would not have been an issue. I haven't looked at the receiver of the SC in this thing yet, so uh, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna take that cover off and uh, check everything else. This is a this is a sensored brushless motor. So here's your there's your sensor wire, and then of course you got your your power wires going to it. Um, I've got this thing on here to keep them grouped together, and also going through there. So I'm not sure. really what the point of that is hmm. and a standard size servo for your shift servo uh, they tell you to be moving like one mile an hour when you shift it um, I find it kind of clunks into gear uh, they're doing that because they want you know to save the servo so the servo is not laboring if you uh, if you shift the gear and you don't move right away but I find if you if you you hit the button on your controller to shift the gear and then just give it a little touch of throttle immediately. It's a little smoother going into second gear. Um, I don't think they recommend shifting on the fly, at, uh, especially at higher speeds. I'm pretty sure it said in the manual something about like crawling at like one mile an hour. Uh, it is a larger size servo, spectrum servo up here. And I said, it seems like it's got power, uh, uh, enough power uh, for out of the box, it's decent. Just uh, you really hear the ESC labor down if you're if you're putting a lot of strain on that servo. So let's open this thing up and uh, see where we're at with the slipper clutch. All right, so took the receiver cover off. It's got a um, SR515 uh, receiver in there. I could. Uh, Definitely fit and run my uh, my DX5C's uh, 6100 receiver in there if I wanted to. Have a little more options um, as far as uh, radio goes. There's the ESC. I don't really see any markings or labeling on it. I'm told it, it it's capable of 4S. I'll probably just run 3S on it. So I didn't have to take that off, obviously, to check the slipper clutch. I just wanted to, I just wanted to take it off and check it out and see what was in there. And all right, so I'll put that cover back on. I'll take the uh, the cover off the transmission there to check out the uh, pinion and uh, spur and everything and the uh, slipper clutch. So you take the cover off. Um, you can see the uh, the spur and pinion in there. The mesh seems good. Uh, unfortunately, to actually get to that slipper clutch, you're pretty much going to have to remove the transmission or that that whole front aluminum plate off of the transmission. So I think that's going to be another day. Like I said, the slipper clutch hasn't seemed to have slipped at all on me, so I think I'm going to say that's okay for now. So, uh, they actually, the, the cover for that is also aluminum. They actually put a, a good amount of Loctite on the, uh, on the screws for that too, so that's, that's good to see. I 
I may do a, uh, a little overview here um, off camera and just kind of look some things over and uh, I'll probably give a, uh, a kind of review on the truck maybe after a little bit more runtime. I see how that uh, see how that servo uh, steering servo works and if it continues to, to perform okay. So I'll give the truck a quick look over. Uh, never hurts. Check, uh, you know, check for any loose uh, screws or hardware or anything like that. I did notice um, they do have a spot to put conventional body posts on the on these guys, whether that's uh, that was for the Jeep or um, they uh, they're gonna have some somebody's gonna start making some bodies for them. Some one six scale bodies. But everything's buttoned back up. I just gotta put the body back around and uh, it'll be ready for some more trail time. Uh, like I said, I'll uh, I'll probably give a, a thorough review um, once uh, I got some more run time on it. The, uh, there is adjustable spots for the uh, lower links, at least on the, uh, the, upper, the upper rear links. There's some adjustability there. Uh, for what I see, the, uh, the drive shaft angle or pinion angle, as they would call it, uh, front and back is, is good right out of the box. Uh, you don't want, you don't want your, your rear diff being level with the ground and then the drive shaft coming in. The more of an angle you have uh, there, the, the more likely you're, you're putting strain on it and can potentially wear, prematurely wear it parts or, or damage it. You usually like to have kind of the way Axial has this uh, this set up. You can see that, whereas the, uh, the diff is just pointing upward just a little bit. There's not a real big angle there. Uh, same as the front. If we can see that, not really, the camera's not really wanting to, but yeah, the, uh, the angle for this drive shaft goes into your, your diffs. You don't want that. Uh, you don't want that being. Uh, I've done something to my camera here. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, you don't want that being uh, on, on quite the angle. Uh, it just it helps out your drivetrain for sure. But uh, yeah, I uh, I like the truck. Um, I'll have to get. I definitely need to get more some some more drive time on it. Uh, the only. Like I said, I'll, I'll do a more in-depth review down the road. Just uh, for now, um, loose, loose dirt and stuff. These tires, they're they're just they're okay um, on rocks. They're great. They get great traction on on just dry rock. I don't know about wet, uh, but yeah, dry rock. They they work phenomenal. I probably will wind up with some Hyrexes on this in the uh, in the future. As far as uh, for now, if you when you do this, you need to remember to reconnect your lights. I'll uh, I'll maybe get some running video at one point. I did. I do have a little bit of running video of me playing. There's actually a friend of mine driving it in the video on some rocks. Maybe I'll throw that on here. Uh, I did do a little bit of uh, tidying up of the wires here. Just put some loom around there and um, put another zip tie up here just to keep them from getting down towards that, that drive shaft. Because I, I would say they could have done a little bit better job with the wires and, and putting them in and tidying them up somewhere. They were just kind of loose all over the place. When I got the truck, but yeah, getting these uh, getting these pins in can be a challenge, as they were with the uh, the ten three. You have a little bit more room in here if you have big hands, so easier than the ten three, but still still a little bit a little bit of a pain. But uh, yeah, I'll throw up the I'll throw up the video of my friend driving it through some rocks where it's really. 
on video it never looks as uh steep or anything as uh as it does when you're actually on it in person but uh it, it's kind of where i got scraped up by uh the body just uh up against those big rocks uh the, the lexan on it is good and thick but uh with the weight of this truck this is like 25 pounds it doesn't take much to get them scratched up but uh that's part for the course with the uh, the rc game whether you're a basher or a uh a crawler even on road you know if you if you traction roll and flip a vehicle and it scrapes across the pavement it doesn't take long to mark them up so uh everybody get out and enjoy your rcs Yeah, that's what I did, and it kind of went right up. I think I kind of come up on an angle or something and I just saw it in the grab when I went up there. Remember I said you know, I never get to do it again? <laughs> well, it also moved that rock back. When oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's oh, all right. If you, if you crank uh, right, maybe it'll it'll just go and straddle that. No, no, he's hung up now. So close, eh? Oh, wheels are on. Yeah. 